it's Thursday the 30th of January 2020. Saracen Minerals released their quarterly report for the December quarter yesterday and it was pretty well uh, liked by the market. It met my expectations of sort of on the high end of, of what it was I was expecting. The uh, If you remember the video I put up a couple of weeks ago on sort of expectations for the quarterly reports for a few of the larger producers for Saracen, I was really looking for if they could push the limit of that 100,000 ounces from Thunderbox and Karasu Dam combined, I thought that would be a very good result. And they did They did almost reach that. I think they were a little bit under, but rounding up, they got to 100,000 ounces. Obviously, they've got the, the super pit as well, their 50% share. That uh, was only one month of production, but it, uh, it was in line with their previous guidance for cost and production as well. So I think they're they're forecasting about 245,000 ounces for their share. So 21,000 ounces is is bang on that um, run rate annualized. Obviously the cost, up, the cost uh, ticked up a little bit, but in part that's due to that super pit, which does have the higher costs around uh, $1,500 Australian in, uh, at the moment. So that sort of brings up the averages a bit, but you know, if you took that out, it would probably be in line with these, that about 1,000 to 1030 sort of level. Drilling down into the detail a bit, Thunderbox has obviously been in a, in a real sweet spot from a cost perspective for the last uh, the last couple of quarters. And I think that's probably about to sort of start to roll over and gradually that you might see a little bit of cost increase there. Karasu Dam's going through a heavy capital investment phase at the moment. The if you can look here, so they only they only uh, had net mine cash flow of two million dollars after that heavy heavy cap heavy capital investment into the underground and also the expansion of the processing facility, which is due in the December quarter. Uh, so Karasu Dam still running at you know everything here is running at, at pretty good rates, uh, running at the, running at its limits. Gradual incremental improvement in grade and recovery and so. The, you know, one of the reasons why I like Saracen as opposed to some of the other producers at the moment is they're still in a growth phase as opposed to something like Regis or even Evolution, Northern Star and St. Barbara. They've all got their own sort of operating problems at the moment or, you know, stagnant periods. So that's why I've sort of been I've been quite bullish on Saracen for the last few months and sort of directing that to be a core core a cornerstone of my portfolio of Australian gold miners. So Karasu Dam still doing very well, you know, all in sustaining costs pretty good. One thing the uh, that's good at both operations is this stockpiled ore, and that's you know they're they're up to what's that more than forty thousand ounces now at Karasu Dam, and I think at Thunderbox it's closer to a hundred thousand ounces, uh, you know, more than a hundred thousand ounces there, where they what they've stockpiled. So both of those are very positive. Karasu Dam, I think in particular, another another thing that's probably understated uh, in its impact is that they've been buying this this third party ore for quite some time, and you can see here, you know, that it, it makes up maybe five to ten thousand ounces a quarter of their production, or maybe five to sort of eight thousand, and now that 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 those purchases were quite expensive. I'm not sure you can see here in their um, the real detail of the report. They spent $18 million in the December quarter on ore purchases. They only produced about uh, 6,000 ounces from those, 6,600, but I'm sure there was probably more gold contained that they've they've stockpiled that ore and will produce from it still. But, you know, it was a considerable cost. And I think, you know, by, I, I'm not sure if that was implemented at that ore purchase agreement was sort of struck when they didn't have as much ore available. I assume it was. But now, uh, now they've got a lot of ore available. In fact, they've probably got an embarrassment of riches at both Karasu Dam and Thunderbox around the processing plants. And uh, so they don't need that, that third party ore again. But I think that should really help the cash flow the, uh, they'll be getting at those operations at, at, at Karasu Dam in particular. You can see here their, their cash flow waterfall. So that ore purchase, $18 million, is a pretty significant impact. So with that removed, you know, obviously your all-in sustaining costs will probably start increasing because that was not included in the all-in sustaining costs at the uh, at those operations. But you know, so I think you probably see a slight uptick in all-in sustaining costs at Karasu Dam, but you're going to have a, a major increase in cash flow. Um, they can obviously they can draw down on some of those stockpiles as well if the mining rates aren't up up to up to scratch. But uh, you know, I like I like the expansion of Karasu Dam is obviously a positive as well. 
not till the December quarter that that's going to be be commissioned. But you know, I think they're it's almost too conservative. They're expanding to 3.2 million tons. But if you look at some of the uh, reserves they have available, uh, this is actually last year's exploration sort of report and uh, where they went into the um, all the resources and reserves available. And since then, they've done some more purchases as well. I'm just trying to find the... So this is the resources table. You know, they've got 3.2, uh, 3.9 million in measured and indicated and resources around Karasu Dam. You know, so they've got an embarrassment of riches. They talked about 10 years of, of reserves, but, you know, I'm wondering if 3.2 million ounces is... Um, or 3.2 million tonnes is almost too too low on the on the milling front. But, you know, I think that's probably locked in now. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if they do something similar at, at Thunderbox, actually. The, there's plenty of resources around there. They, they've talked about the uh, potential increase. Uh, they've got the, the mine plan there as well. If I This is the feasibility study for the underground. So, you know, they, they're looking at 2 million tonnes consistently from the underground uh, by FY23. And I guess some open pit as well, but I think you know it's almost like there's, there might be opportunity there to expand the mill as well. So I'm not sure if they, you know, they did do a lot of uh, drilling around Thunderbox, and that they, they've acquired a few of these other assets. They acquired um, Sinclair from uh, Talisman, and also the um, Bly Resources tenements as well. So you know, there's definitely some opportunity there potentially for expansion. So I'm not sure if that's a little ways off, maybe they just they still wait to see if they uh, how well the underground performs and they as they develop that. But they've, yeah, I think in the last year what they've really done well is just gradually put those building blocks in place for that longer term growth and potential expansion of these assets. Obviously, they're doing the expansion of Karasu Dam, but I think potentially the uh, Thunderbox operation can be expanded as well. Um, I noticed today also that they they sold down their stake in uh, Red Five which is, uh, I think, was probably the right thing to do. You know, that's probably had it done its course, that transaction, uh, unless they wanted to buy, you know, they wanted to be a, a substantial shareholder in, in uh, Red 5 to buy the King of the Hills deposit, you know, which is kind of a long shot, but otherwise they, there's no real reason for them to hold Red 5 shares. They only got in there as kind of when Red 5 was in kind of a cash strap position. So that's, a, you know, that's, really helps this I know that they I've, I've commented before that I don't like the way they include their investments in their their sort of cash and bull in uh, in their case it's probably not so bad since red five shares are, are reasonably liquid I know a lot of companies do it with they've got a few uh, sort of crummy small cap investments so they include that in this category as uh, like their equivalent you know they're not even even today I think Saracen had to sh sell those shares at about a nine percent discount to market price I mean, a junior, in a, even more of a junior company, you're looking at a massive discount if you, you know, for, when there's no liquidity in the stock. Um, but obviously, that can go toward their debt repayments now as well. They made an early debt repayment in in December, uh, associated with the um, KCGM acquisition. So I think you know, the, I was I mainly focused on uh, Thunderbox and Karasu Dam, but obviously the the Super Pit perform very well as like you know within expectations and I think they're making really good steps toward uh, that asset being um, something better than it has been in the past one one key thing in here they've talked about joint operatorship with Northern Star so previously Newmont was the operator and Barrick was kind of the silent partner but it looks like now it's going to be a real 50-50 uh, split of um, intellectual resources as well. So Northern Star is probably going to focus on the the underground, and Saracen's going to focus on the open pit, uh, which is obviously it was particularly good since um, their managing director used to work as a mining engineer at the super pit. So that's you know I think that makes perfect sense, and I thought that would probably be a pretty logical uh, split of responsibilities. You know, it seems like Northern Star is really going to try and expand the underground and obviously get some more, uh, some more tons and higher grade into the into the mine plan. Whereas previously, the you know Newmont was focusing more on the open pits. So that that looks very positive, but obviously it's going to take a few quarters to see some of the results of that exploration and the you know changes in the mine plan. The pit wall failure as well. They talked about that in the conference call. I think Northern Star is just doing a bit of um, a review of the. Uh, results as well as, as Saracen. 
of the previous plan to to remediate the pit wall failure. So that's uh, something to to look out for. It seemed like there's, you know they're just doing their due diligence on that based on the, the comments they made on the quarterly. Um, so it was a pretty a pretty good quarter, and I think obviously the markets liked the uh, liked it. This is this chart's uh, not showing today's result. We're a past market close now. It's about uh, 5:30 Eastern time, but the market price is now uh, $4 too. So that's you know peaked above the the previous sort of high in um, November there, and looking pretty positive. Uh, obviously, I you know. The one thing I like about these guys is that you know it's the operations that are driving the share price. It's not not anything else sort of one-off factors, but it's real from the ground up. Everything's sort of humming along at the moment, and that's what you really want. They're in a bit of a sweet spot at at Thunderbox with you know really really good cash generation. Still in a you know pretty heavy capex phase at Carisu Dam, but you can see probably next year that there's going to be a lot more cash generated at Carisu Dam once all the capex works finished and they expand that mill to. Uh, 3.2 million tons. So, you know, the other thing that's coming up potentially in, in the March quarter or in March is the ASX um, 100 rebalance. And I know this has sort of been pointed out before that Saracen is now, I think by market cap, is inside the ASX, it should be in the ASX 100. So you could see that. I think based on my calcs, it's probably about 90 in the in the uh, by market cap. There are obviously some other factors that go into the inclusion into the indices, but I think there's a good chance they get included in the ASX 100 in March and the rebalance. So that's that's a pretty positive thing as well, and it shows that they've really entered the the you know the big leagues with um, only Newcrest and Northern Star and Evolution in that ASX 100. So that's that's pretty positive. You know, it just creates a little bit more. Uh, you know, some funds who are only able to invest in that real real top uh, large company, large gold miners might be now be able to look at Saracen as well. So I think that's a real real positive and it just shows us that was part of the rationale for the, the Super Pit acquisition. And I talked about that in the video I put up in December after the acquisition. So as we see that that big money starting to come into the, the gold sector, hopefully in the next you know six to 12 months, I'm, uh, I'm positive that, that that acquisition will be uh, looked upon as a good move. So that's all. That's probably all there is to talk about the Saracen uh, report. I thought it was, as I said, a very good report and uh, sets them up well for the rest of the year. And you know, a firm sort of market confidence in their in their abilities. Uh, just one thing I've I've talked about this in the last couple of videos, but you know, I've started up this this Patreon page for this. So this video is a free one I'm putting up on YouTube, but most of the content now is on the Patreon page. So there's weekly content, uh, six US dollars a month to join. And uh, you know I've, I've done quarterly reports on on uh, Perseus, Saint Barbara, Regis, and Resolute so far. Obviously this one on Saracen, and then there'll be some uh, some more discussion of some of the other reports from uh, you know Medusa, Northern Star, Evolution, Gold Road, and Dacian as well. Uh, so I'll probably put them up on the uh, on the weekend. So if you're interested in this sort of content, uh, there's more of it available on the site if if you want to want to subscribe. Uh, but obviously there will there'll still be a little bit of free YouTube content, but more and more of the content will be going on to the Patreon page. So that's that's probably about it. Uh, obviously, very good report from Saracen, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.